Today we are joined by another very special guest for part two of this little graduation series. Clara has been my best friend since I was 10 years old. So we have seen each other through literally every phase of life. And I'm so proud of her because she just graduated UC Berkeley. I wanted to have her on and talk to her a little bit about her experience and how she's feeling now that she's graduated. If you want to see part one, I talk with my sister. She is one year pre-grad, so she has one year left of college and she's going into her senior year and we get into her whole college experience and how she's feeling. And this episode is more centered around graduation in present time. I have one more episode planned, also featuring a very special guest, where we get into two years post-grad. Without further ado, let's welcome my childhood best friend, Clara. Welcome, Clara. Thank you. I'm so (laughs) happy that you're here. Me too. So you recently graduated UC Berkeley. Yeah. Congratulations. This is a big ass deal. It feels like already like done. Like I'm like, okay, yeah, like done with that. Like, I kind of feel like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like for like... you specifically, I was telling Zoe this, it feels like you've been in college for like 10 years. And same with Zoe. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but you guys gave off the same energy that like you guys are younger a little bit, but yeah. like... Well, we're like so... almost the same age, but we're like further apart yeah. in school. So it was always like... Oh, yeah. You know, we're not that far apart, but then like two years in school is like... Yeah. You and Zoe are closer in yeah. age, actually. So Clara is... Wait, how old are you? <laughs> You're 23. I'm 23, yeah. Oh, and my sister is 20. Oh, and I'm 24. Yeah. But you're two years behind me. Yeah. So I'm, so like, you're closer like, to you, but, like, yeah. further behind. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Wait. That did not, like, process my brain. <laughs> so you're kind of older. Yeah, I am older graduating class. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I've always been, like, the oldest in the class, which is so funny, and I tell people this all the time, but I was always the youngest amongst our dance friends, or, like, yeah. me and Layla were, like, the youngest. So I always was, like felt like so young at mm. the ballet studio but then was like the oldest in my grade mm. like so I was like so young compared to like you Coco Lily but then was like so true literally the oldest in my class but you were born in 2001 right yeah that's only a year younger yeah but it felt because it was two grades it yeah, felt like okay, yeah, that's true. like literally like me and Layla have talked about this like so much like we bonded over this because we came into high school like with our dance friends like really being like our core friend group we were like they were our besties so then we both didn't really when we got to high school like we considered our dance friends very much like our closest friends so our first like year of high school we didn't really like make that much of an effort wait to make friends this is exactly how i did high school like i was like i made an effort to not make friends with people (laughs) at high school because i was like no i have my dance friends i'm good yeah which that backfired because our little friend group had beef. <laughs> yeah. We just had our social life outside of school. And then when we were sophomores, that's when everyone went to college. Yeah. So we were like oh, yeah. still sophomores in high school. And then we were like, wait, like we don't know anyone at our schools. And then me and Layla got like close after that. Cause we were like, yes. oh my God, like there's no one left to yeah. hang out with. But I did just finish college. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like very much like done with that, like onto the next thing. Yeah. Like, I remember you were saying too when you were like literally this past semester yeah you were like I'm so ready to be done and I was like Clara I totally understand (laughs) like enjoy yourself yeah I feel like it's nerve-wracking and a lot of people say this before they graduate because they're like oh like no one's gonna be in the same place anymore like it's gonna be like so sad whatever like it's just hard to transition from like being around like everyone you know to like being on your own and um I definitely felt that way too like before graduating I was like oh my god that might be like really tough But it ends up being fine because then it's, like, everyone's in the same position. I mean, some people are, like, moving somewhere totally new. And, like, I can imagine that's, like, really hard. But that wasn't really, like, the case for me. It's, like, I just have my home friends. And so I actually feel, like, totally fine. Like, I don't feel, like, oh, my God, like, like, missing it so much. And, like, good. I feel like you were over it, like, before you even graduated. Like, you were ready yeah it was also draining like the year was definitely draining for me because of just like thesis and everything like oh yeah what was your major again (laughs) so I was an English major English literature um didn't you switch at one point yeah I did switch I definitely did not think I was going to be an English major I like in high school I would have said I wanted to do like 
political science or something um I got there like didn't want to do that I kind of just went based off of like what classes I wanted to take because I wasn't 100 percent sure I was like let me just do what classes I like and those ended up being history classes so I took mm. a few quite a few history classes my first like year and a half ish and then I didn't really like how they were like structured that much at Berkeley like it was like I didn't like them that much and then I was taking a couple of English classes at the same time just because I liked the topics and I was like I like these classes a lot better and then I yeah. just like did English the rest of the time and didn't really like think about it again so you were a poli sci major before or were you law I, I was remember history. you being law I oh, was history. gonna do I thought about doing like legal studies and then I was like no that's so like bland I took one political science class in college it was like, I didn't even take one like, oh. <laughs> I did not even take a single one because well, this was when I was debating my major yeah and I was debating between well after I got rejected from the dance the arts yeah. programs basically <laughs> I was like philosophy politics and law yeah or psychology mm-hmm. or environmentalism yeah and so I took basically one class from each except oh, for the cool. environmentalism one I did not even yeah, take I one don't remember yeah no I didn't class. but I took one poli sci law class and you like really liked it, right? It was actually really fun because it was in 2020. Yeah. And that was the election and yeah. then when BLM was big, like yeah. really huge. Mm-hmm. So I was like really into it and very passionate about it. Um, yeah. so it was a really interesting class and yeah, it was like really rich because of the current events and stuff, but ultimately there was like it was way too reading heavy for me and I don't think, like, I'm a politics girl. Like, Mm -hmm. now, three years later, I definitely, like, feel a sense of, like, social justice, if that makes sense. Like, I'm, like, morally drawn to the issues. The issues. (laughs) Yeah. For sure. I don't know how to even talk about it. (laughs) Like, I'm I'm definitely morally drawn to that, but... um, But not, like, a policy No, like, cannot get into the technical bits of it, and Mm -hmm. sometimes I do get really like, angry about Thanks. our state of affairs, and I don't know if that's, like, the most productive way to, like, mm-hmm. approach mm-hmm. the subject. Yeah, I definitely chose based off of, like, the structure of the major, too. Like, I definitely have, like, a lot of interest. Like, I feel like I could have gone in, like, many directions, but, for example, with political science, the classes just seemed a lot bigger to me because it's a more, like, popular major, and, like, I mean, I don't even know if that's true. They probably have seminars that are smaller, but the English major was... All the classes were, like, under... 50 people at least at Berkeley Mm. it's a pretty small major so I felt like that was better for me and then there was um a seminar requirement so we had to do like a seminar every year or just sophomore and junior senior year and I liked that because I it would like force me to take a small class like around like 10 people every year which I was like I feel like I do want that Mm -hmm. so I definitely in part chose it based off of just like the structure of the classes and like Mm -hmm. how big it was and just feeling like I would get more out of it like more attention more talking time and stuff like that because it's it is so easy to get really like drowned out at a big school like you just realize that like oh my god yeah some of the our like core classes at USC were like there were a hundred over a hundred students in Dude. a lecture. <laughs> My first <laughs> class I went to at Berkeley was on Zoom because of COVID. Such a popular class that I just had to take. And the Zoom on the first day had a thousand people in it. Yeah. Oh? Wait, yeah. So when did COVID happen for you? It was um, like I went in to college in 2020. Like graduated high school in 2020, went into college in 2020. And yeah. it, COVID didn't happen until like mid-year kind of? So that was my senior year of high school, like March oh. of senior year of high school, and then went into college during COVID. So yeah, you were yeah. literally the first class to go into college when COVID was... Oh my god. It was pretty how crazy. Did, how did that work for you? It was definitely really different than all the other years, Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess all the years were different, but um, I remember the summer before and stuff being like receiving emails about oh, you're going to have one roommate. Oh, you're going to have no roommate. Like, it was just, like, <laughs> yeah. worse and worse yeah. news, you yeah. know? I mean, I was so excited to, like, get out of the house because mm-hmm. it was, like, COVID and stuff. Like, I was so ready to go. And, like, that was part of the reason I went to Berkeley because I was, like, I just want to, like, go somewhere new and, like, not mm-hmm. be home all the time. And I was really excited to, like, meet people and, like, I really wanted to have roommates and stuff like that. So it was definitely, like, kind of crushing to just, like, get there. And then there's, like, three people on your floor. Yeah. But as a freshman... Um, and going into college, like, not getting that initial social 
yeah. like exposure like I can't imagine that luckily I was like around like great people so I still ended up having like a good time but I know there were people who definitely had it a lot harder and oh were just God. like yeah. stuck in their rooms yeah so for sure. how many colleges did you apply for like a lot I actually kind of regret like I didn't really think about like what I wanted in college or out of college like before when I was applying and before I went like I kind of just was like it'll work out type of thing. That's how I did it too. Yeah. Like my sister took the approach of like, I mean, she's always been very like, she thinks ahead, Mm -hmm. but I was the same way in that I didn't really have a dream school, didn't know what I wanted to do. Like it was just something that I knew I had to do. Yeah. So I was like, whatever, I was riding the wave. But I do wish I had thought more about like Mm. what I wanted out of college, like what kind of experience I wanted to have. Like, I feel like you have to be like really honest with like what you need as like, a student because there are there's so many aspects of college life but that's like that is why you're there and like that was important to me but I didn't I realized I hadn't really thought about that much before I applied and while I was applying so I do wish I'd done that and then I definitely was open to leaving California but like when it came down to the decisions I it was all like California schools I was considering but I definitely had always like I'm sure in the back of my mind I think like wanted to go to Berkeley. I don't remember too well now, but um, <laughs> it just like like felt right. There wasn't. Really, I don't know. Like, you, a particular you yeah. Reason. I feel like you really like embody <laughs> Berkeley so well. Like it it makes so much sense in my head at least. Yeah. Like you and Berkeley, and you did study abroad, right? Yeah, I studied abroad my junior year, like most people do. Junior spring. Where did you go? I went to Edinburgh, Scotland. I also wasn't convinced I was gonna go abroad. Like I mm. kind of just did it because my friends were doing it. Oh yeah, I actually remember you talking to me about it and like really heavily debating it and saying yeah. that it was like not exactly something that you wanted to do, but I'm so glad you did it. Like I, know, I definitely am like a huge advocate for like yeah. study abroad if you can. Yeah. How'd it go? It was so great. Like I'm really glad I did it too. I mean, I was scared going in because a lot of my friends who were going abroad were maybe like getting an apartment or things like that with like people from Berkeley, like people they already knew. But I went, like, completely on my own. Like, didn't know anyone else who was going to Scotland. I just did random roommates. So, like, it could have, frankly, gone, like, so poorly. Yeah. And I knew that, like, in the back of my mind. Like, I was, like, I could get there, like, not like the people I'm living with. And I did student housing. That's why it was random. So that some oh, people yeah. go abroad and they just, like, find their own apartments. Right. And they know they're gonna who their roommates are going to be. But mine was random, just student housing. And... I knew, like, I was like, okay, I might get there and have, like, no friends, but at least in that case, like, I'll have other friends who are abroad, too, and then I was like, and if I stay home, like, there's not that many people staying, so it's like, either way, like, I might as well just go, so I just went, but then it ended up being so great, like, my roommates were, like, the best people ever, like, I'm still, I consider them all besties, there were other Americans who were so great, and I've, like, visited them since, and then two British girls, like, one from London and one from Scotland that were there too, which was also great because a lot of people who went abroad didn't really, like, meet locals or, like, local students. Like, it's very much, like, they just stay with their Mm -hmm. people, like, other Americans they go abroad with or whatever. And I felt, like, so great, like, being able to, like, interact with, like, actual students there. Yeah. It's just so fun having British friends. I mean, like, they're so British. Like, they play rugby. Like, they have, like, their little accents. They call me Clara. Clara! Yeah. No, I love that. It's I felt so the great. same way. Like, I studied in London for a year, my freshman year. So that was, like, also really, I feel like, a big change to be a freshman mm-hmm. and going abroad. Yeah. So that's, like, your first impression, pretty much, of college. Yeah. But um, when I went, my first semester, basically, there were, like, two groups of people that were studying abroad that were going to go into USC. Mm-hmm. There were the Trojan Transfer Plan people, which is the group that I was a part of. So we were going to be there for a year and our admission was not guaranteed. We had to get a certain GPA in order to Mm -hmm. get admitted officially. And then there were the spring admits. Their admission was already guaranteed. And so they were there only for the fall. Yeah. And so for the fall, I was so focused on like making sure that when I did get to USC, like I had friends and stuff. Yeah. And so I only really hung out with the Americans. Yes, yeah. yeah. The USC people. And then second semester, they all left. Yeah. And so I was kind of like forced to make friends with the Europeans. So glad that that yeah. ended up being the case because yeah. it was just 
so cool to make friends with people who are from a different place than me. Yeah, no, I'm so glad I met my British girlies. Like, they, yeah. and I just visited them, too. Like, after I graduated, I went back to Scotland and then that. stayed with them. You just get so quickly close with people you live with. So mm-hmm. even though we only, like, lived together for, like, five months, it felt like a year hadn't passed when we saw each mm-hmm. other again, you know? Like, yeah. it, just, it felt like it'd just been, like, a couple weeks or something. Yeah. How was your overall experience in college? It was good. I mean, I mentioned this, but, like, I went to a really big school, and I came from, like, a really... I went to a really small high school, like, really, really small, like, under 100 people. Mm -hmm. Private school. Mm -hmm. All girls' school, too. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, really, really different vibe. Yep. So, I mentioned this earlier, but it's, like, really easy to get, like, drowned out in a big school. That's kind of why I wish I'd gone in with, like, a little bit more, like, intention of, like, what I want to, like, do. Like, because it's, like, you can't do everything. You can't meet everyone. Like, you can't. Yeah. It's just impossible. So, Mm -hmm. it's, like, I feel like it's good to be, like, this is the thing I want to, like, get involved in or, like... These are the type of people I want to hang out with, know what's important to you, and then just stick to that, and, mm-hmm. like, it'll probably turn out great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a good experience, but definitely rough in terms of, like, adjusting to a big school, especially, like, I feel like I adjusted to a COVID school, and then a non-COVID oh, school, yeah. and then, like, there was definitely a lot of adjustment periods, but overall great. Like, I loved every single class I took. The stuff I got involved in was pretty actually kind of, like, separate from the school, like, separate mm-hmm. from Berkeley, but I still found, like, things I really liked, mm-hmm. um, like, really enjoyed the internships I did, and, like, I didn't feel like my college experience was, like, all defined mm-hmm. by Berkeley necessarily. Like, it yeah. wasn't, like, everyone I was meeting, with, like, went there. Like, I wasn't the most involved in student life, I will yeah. say. So sometimes I'm, like, oh, when people are, like, oh, how's Berkeley? I'm, like, maybe I'm not the best person to ask because <laughs> I was definitely not the most involved, for sure. But I did generally have a good time and, like, definitely found the stuff I liked, even if it wasn't yeah. associated with the school. I also wasn't super involved, I think. I think I tried to be when I first got there, but I also, like, when I got there, I was there for a semester and then COVID happened. Mm-hmm. And so then I spent like a year and a half at home. Yeah. And I only got like one full year at USC, literally my last year. Yeah. So it was like kind of hard for me to be like super involved in school, mm-hmm. but I definitely tried to where I could. Yeah. But I don't think I really was. You were saying this before we started recording, but you said that you definitely didn't peak in college, <laughs> which I love because <laughs> I feel like. Wait, low-key, like, I feel like my peak has... Wait. I feel like there was... <laughs> you feel a... like you did peak in college. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I feel like there was a point in college where I did peak, but yeah. I know that's not, like, my peak. Like, it was, like, within that yeah, four years. Yeah, within yeah. college I did peak. Have a peak. A I mean, peak. I think that's yes. normal, yeah. yeah. There, were, there were times that were better than others, like, right. that's yeah. normal. No, but I love that you say that because I feel like a lot of people, they, like, peak in high school like I know yeah. people who have peaked in high school yeah, we all know people who peaked in high school. and then I I think I also know people that peaked in, peaked in college yeah I don't think there's anything wrong with that but like yeah we, we don't want that right like we always want to like maybe reach a peak and then another peak yeah like have multiple peaks <laughs> exactly yeah like there were definitely ups and downs in college like there were times that were so fun times that were harder but like I knew I wanted to go to grad school like I I had a pretty strong sense of like what I was interested in in terms of after graduating so it wasn't like I felt like I was going to graduate and then like have no interest like have to start from scratch so I don't know I think I just had like a sense of like other things yeah. like bigger kind of like things than just like yeah that's good um, I feel like in college it's sometimes easy to get sucked into like really wrapped up like yeah yeah this is college this is my experience and like yeah it's all consuming sometimes yeah in some ways I feel like maybe I also felt like that because leaving college, I'm I'm like, wait, that wasn't like... It's just so not everything. It's just so not everything. Exactly. It's so so not everything. And I think there were points in college where I definitely felt like this was like everything. Mm -hmm. Even in high school, there are points in your life where you think that it's going to be this way for the rest of your life, but it's not. Yeah, it's like such a big deal. yeah, Yeah. And I feel like I'm kind of realizing that, or I've been realizing that as I've kind of entered like the post-grad mm-hmm. world I will say I kind of like like having a sense of independence like identity like separate mm-hmm. from Berkeley honestly and kind of being like past it because I didn't like like the pressure of college and not even like mm-hmm. academic pressure more in terms of like I mean Berkeley's still like people think it's really really nerdy and academic which it definitely is and like there definitely are pockets of it that are more than others but it's also just a state school like yeah. there's football games like there's yeah. like 
a huge Greek life population. Yeah. So, but I wasn't into that stuff. So yeah. there definitely always was this kind of like looming pressure of like, or just looming sense of like, I'm not like doing it right, you know? Yeah. But even though I kind of felt like that, I still felt like I was like doing it the way I wanted yeah. to. Yeah, which is, that's what's important. Yeah, that's more important. But I definitely like living without that sense of like, yeah. I'm not doing it right better. Totally. Like when I was there, like I lived close to Front Row and like right. whatever, like all that stuff. So it was like, it really in my face that I like wasn't part of it. Yeah. And that was something I didn't love. Mm-hmm. So it's actually easier for me to be kind of like over it and like be like, oh yeah, I went to Berkeley. Like it's part of my identity, but not yeah. like with the pressure of like, oh, you need to be yeah. like, act like a college student and yeah. like go to games and like go to mm-hmm. bars and like whatever. Like, I feel like that's a really refreshing perspective. Yeah. Because I feel like there's a lot of pressure to like conform in college. And I don't feel that you have ever been the type of person to conform at the expense of yourself so you didn't do greek life yeah did you always know that you were not gonna do greek life or yeah i mean i feel like a lot of people who do it i don't know it's like their parents also did it like it's kind of like just normal Mm -hmm. for them like they know they're gonna do it when they're younger and stuff and like it was not like that for me like i didn't know what greek life was before getting to college really like not gonna see my parents do it (laughs) like it was just not like something I ever like heard about growing up like my parents didn't go to state schools or anything so I didn't know much of like what it was I kind of had not heard like great things and then Mm -hmm. when I got to Berkeley I was like I was kind of surprised that so many people I knew were doing it and Mm -hmm. I was like why would they want to do this but then I realized like because like I said, I had I'd been at a really small high school, so, like, it is just because it's, like, such a big school, and mm-hmm. it's just a way to, like, create community within, like, a really... When you are in a class of, like, 10,000 people. Yeah. So I definitely wouldn't just say, like, bad things about it. Like, it's totally, like, has its reason for, yeah, for sure. existing. Also, because it was COVID when I went in, I didn't, I didn't realize, like, how big the school really was and, like, how much you do kind of, like, need to carve out space for yourself. So I definitely did not understand it in the beginning, but... Honestly, like, in retrospect, you know, you're only in college for four years. Like, if you want to, like, make a lot of friends and, like, a lot of connections and, like, do it that way, like, totally do it. You can still do it, like, your way. Yeah. And I am kind of, like, I definitely could have done it, like, my way. Like, could have, like, dipped my toes in, like, just made some friends and then, like, did my own thing. That's totally an option. But generally, I was, from the beginning, I just didn't, I just didn't really, like, get it. Loki, I don't even think I knew what Greek life was until I got to college. Since I wasn't super involved in my high school, I didn't really hear my peers or anybody really talking about it. And I also don't think my parents are a part of Greek life either. I mean, like, yeah. my mom is from China. Yeah. And my dad, like, just isn't. I don't think he's like that. So I didn't really consider it either mm-hmm. until I got to college and also by then like I was in London so there's no Greek life in London yeah the only time that I ever really like heavily considered it was my first semester freshman year I was like yes I did research on all the sororities because I was like really ready to like throw myself into the USC college life like Mm -hmm. I didn't have a good time in high school so I wanted to like make sure that my college experience was like yeah better yeah and that started with like making friends for me Mm -hmm. and from what my peers at the study abroad USC were telling me it was like the way to do it was through Greek life so I like looked up into like all the sororities and stuff and like I fully intended on rushing and like Mm -hmm. doing all this stuff but also I was trying to kind of do the things that the people around me were doing Mm -hmm. instead of really doing things for myself Because I also, like, I had no sense of self. I didn't know what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of, like, absorbing what other people were telling me and what I thought would be acceptable amongst my peers. But once second semester rolled around and everybody left and I fully immersed myself in, like, European culture, it's like, absolutely not. Like, Greek life is definitely not for me. I, like, developed a better sense of self. And so I was able to, like, identify that for myself And then when I actually got to USC, what I did try to do is this society at USC. I mean, I think it's not just at USC either. I think you can find this community at different schools as well, but it's called Expat Society. And I thought it was so perfect because it's really similar to Greek life. Have you heard of it? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, it's really similar to Greek life, but it's not like Greek life. Like, Mm -hmm. it's basically... 
I mean, you can understand generally what it is based off of the name, but it's like people from all over the world. And one of the criteria that you need to join is having lived internationally for X amount of time. And obviously my year in London was going to help me with that. But anyways, I really wanted to do that because I felt like it was so much more in line with, I guess, my identity at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, But then COVID happened, so I didn't actually have like a real shot. And apparently it was like a really selective thing. But actually fast forward to the year after my graduation, this community ended up actually inviting me to do a campaign with them. That's fun. For one of their white parties. So in some ways I was still able to like interact with them. Yeah. And be a part of it. So that was really nice. But yeah, I also felt the same way. Like also as women, I feel like it's easier for us to be a part of Greek life without being a part of Greek life because we can still go to the parties and we can obviously still be friends with people who are a part of Greek life. But, you know, as guys, like at least at USC, like you would need to pay to get into the parties or like you can't even just be boys with yeah. some of the guys that are a part of the frat or whatever. So when I was a sophomore, I definitely like did my fair share of partying on the row and stuff. But I agree, the culture was just not for me. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily like or agree with the way that they kind of treat women. Based off of what I've heard too, because I didn't actually rush or like experience it. But some of the nasty things that I've heard about it, like just do not sit right with me. Mm -hmm. But I also have girlfriends who did rush and like it was a great experience for them. So I can't say neither here nor there if it was like good or bad like everyone has their own experience Mm -hmm. but for sure for me it was like not not it yeah not it for me either yeah was Berkeley your dream school or did you have one yeah I didn't have one I mean that was kind of what I was I guess what I meant when I was saying like I wish I'd thought about it more Mm -hmm. like I kind of do wish I'd had a stronger sense of like this is what I want this is what I don't want and I didn't it just like was kind of off of like a gut feeling that I went well now that you're done I know everybody hates this fucking question like I still hate this question but do we have plans for post-grad life I wouldn't say I have definitive plans (laughs) that's fair that's totally fair I mean I want to go to grad school but maybe in a couple years I think I want to work a little first but I'm flexible with like the type of work I don't feel like it needs to be like my like 100% this is going to be my career work right right away. No, I feel like that's a good perspective to have because me coming right out of college, I was like, I need to have everything figured out. Like I was so nervous and I felt such an immense pressure to like have the answers. Mm -hmm. And I know now that like, that's just not how it works. And thank God I don't feel this pressure anymore because holy shit, like that was it was too much for me. But yeah, I feel like sometimes coming right out of college, there is somewhat of like an expectation or a societally accepted mm-hmm. path that you can take post grad. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, okay, we went to school to get a major to get a job. Or it's like the way to get your job is to get the major in the field that you want mm-hmm. to pursue. But I feel like more and more people are not even going into the fields that they majored in. Like I didn't. I majored in psych and I'm working retail and doing social media and stuff. Yeah. If you're gonna Mm -hmm. like, if you have a really specific like technical thing you want to do, like computer science, like yeah, or like pre med, like med med school. I feel like okay, that's you you have to get your med school major or whatever the fuck. However that works. But people do like post back too. So it's like mm-hmm. if you go to college and do like a not a science major, they'll go like apply to like post bachelorette programs okay. and then they can do all their science classes yeah. later. I feel like it was, it's hard to know too even yeah. what you want to do so young. Like applying to colleges, I was like, yeah, I want to do art. But like now I'm kind of glad that I didn't do it because it's like, yeah. how would I... I mean, I'm sure I would have like found use for whatever path that I took if not this one but yeah like I was thinking about and I'm like when I was 18 I had no idea what I actually wanted to do like I still don't even know what I want to do and so many people change what they want to do and explore different topics and industries I think it's 
kind of, I don't want to, I feel like weird is the wrong word, but it is interesting that the norm is to pick a field and the expectation then is to like go into that same field, but to choose it when you're so young and like don't really have a good grasp of what the world is like. I don't know. It's a lot of pressure to put on like young people yeah. who like don't know what they want to like make such a big decision. Yeah. I mean, I've said this, but like I, I do wish I had been able to take like a little bit more, I mean, not with COVID and stuff, but more time, like either before college or kind of like during to kind of like reflect and like think about what I actually mm. like wanted a little yeah. bit more. Cause it's like, you just go in and it's, it just all happens pretty quickly. And yeah. I think that's what I'm kind of like good with taking some time now because by the end of college I was just like powering through you know like I was like I just need to like finish my thesis yeah finish these classes and I don't necessarily want it to be like that if I go to grad school like I don't just want to like go and then be like okay I just need to like finish this like I want to be a little bit more like intentional totally I mean I guess that's kind of why people do like gap years like that's literally the purpose of those either like out of high school or in the middle of college or even after college like I like to say that I kind of did a gap year my first year after I graduated because I really like didn't do that much like yeah I was unemployed and just like I had no idea what the fuck was going on yeah I just needed that time I think which I think was helpful in helping me find like the next step Mm -hmm. or the next direction yeah because now I feel a lot better about it thankfully Mm -hmm. but that's good I'm glad that you are not feeling this pressure to like have your next steps totally figured out yeah I mean some people do and I'm like so happy for them like you know I'm glad they do yeah that's that's also so nice for its own reasons do you have any like goals for this next year yeah I mean I'm always trying to like live healthier like have a little bit of a more balanced life like I did do dance semesters in college Mm -hmm. I just feel like doing something like that is just like better for you like overall like having a hobby and stuff yeah just having like a something movement based as like part of your schedule oh yeah oh absolutely yeah if I don't have things like that that are part of my schedule it's really easy for me to just like live really like irregularly Mm -hmm. like not you know exercise or like eat healthy regularly and stuff so I'm always trying to like get into the habit of just having like a schedule with those types of things Mm -hmm. we have one final question actually from one of you guys and it's that was college worth it for me yeah yeah, but. I also agree. <laughs> it depends on the person. Yeah. But I mean, for me, yeah, because I want to go to grad school. So there's like, yeah, kind true. Of an, yeah. like I had to go to college. Yeah. Like you can't apply to grad school if you haven't. Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as I know. But yeah. And like, you know, the UCs are great. Like it was definitely worth it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think college is worth it for sure. I feel like sometimes there is a question about like whether or not college is worth it. Because, you know, college is not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And at least like within my life I feel like it could have gone either way although I do think that going to college was right for me for sure within my family college was always something that was required basically like there was no question on whether or not I was going to college which is also kind of part of the reason why I didn't think too much of what my college experience was going to be because I just knew one way or another like that was what was going to have to happen for me but I definitely think there's always value in higher education. There's no way that you're not going to learn anything in four years. Mm -hmm. And that's not even just about like higher education. Like you're going to learn people skills, fulfilling the responsibilities that you have that come with being a student, like making sure that you're going to class. And it's kind of like the first time in your life, nobody is telling you like you need to go to school, go to sleep, eat food or like exercise. Like, you are pretty much being left to your own devices for the first time in your life. So if not it being worth, like, the higher education, it's definitely worth everything else that you get from it, I think. Obviously, if you can and have the resources to go to college, I think there's always value in it. Yeah, you know, you like, everything you do, you just learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. Which is, like, always good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. 